Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,689. Today we're talking vets, Corvettes, baby. Buckle up. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in Montgomery Village, Maryland, with a very special guest by the name of Mike Furman. Mike, welcome to Cars Yeah! Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready to go. You're the best, and I'm here for you. Oh, you're so kind. Well, thank you. Well, listen, before I give you a proper introduction, I want you to share one little thing with my listeners that most people may not know about you. Well, I guess... um that I wrestled two movie stars. Uh, one was in high school and one was in college. Oh, really? Well, I understand you were quite the wrestler back in the day. Who were these two fellows that you wrestled with? Well, in high school, I wrestled a guy named Thomas C. Maypother the fourth, and the C stood for Cruz, and his real name <laughs> in, in now is Tom Cruise. You know, I tell you, I, that's pretty incredible. But I want you to augment this because I know a little story about you, Mike, that perhaps led Tom Cruise into the direction of being in the movies. Yeah, it's pretty funny, actually. I, I wrestled him and uh, I separated his shoulder within about 45 seconds of the match. Ouch. And so he was out for the season. And he ended up trying theater for a, a go in, in high school and uh, did pretty well at theater and ended up uh, <laughs> with a little bit of a career you might know of. So does he send you like residual checks for driving him in that direction? No, but you know what the funny thing is? Someday I'm going to run into him and I know he's going to remember me because of the pain I inflicted on him. Yeah. One of his good friends growing up was a guy named TJ and... Um, T.J., uh, Tommy Jarrett is his name, and wrestled for Duke University. Uh -huh. And I, I wrestled against Duke, and uh, after the match, I'm in Cameron Indoor Stadium, and there's a bunch of people around us, and T.J. walks up to me, and I didn't know him from a hole in the wall, and he goes, you're the one that um, separated uh, Tom Cruise's shoulder. Mm. And this is like in around 1983 or so, and so Tom had already been in a few movies and would, had already filmed Top Gun, and it was coming out like the following year. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And like everybody around me was like E.F. Hutton. They wanted to hear what the heck was going on. <laughs> and um, he says, yeah, you wrestled Tommy Maypother. I said, well, I remember Tommy Maypother. I wrestled him, you know, from Glen Ridge High School. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, that's Tom Cruise. Uh, his middle initial is C. And it, that's how he came up with uh, Tom Cruise. That's his middle name. Wow. And um, that's the story on him. That's pretty cool. Now, you mentioned a second guy who became kind of famous that you wrestled. Who was that? His name was Michael Shuffling. He wrestled for Temple University, and he walked into Bill Blass's studio one day in Philadelphia and said he wanted to be a model, and I guess they liked him and uh, said, come back with pictures. He went back with pictures. He ended up being on the cover of GQ magazine three months in a row, which was unheard of back then. Wow. And he, he ended up in several movies, uh, one of which is 16 Candles. He's Jake Ryan, the guy that the rich guy that drives the red Porsche. Okay, very cool. Well, gee, that's an interesting sidebar. So two folks you've wrestled with. I, I'm kind of guessing you beat him wrestling too. I was fortunate to win that day, but he was a great wrestler. There's no doubt. He had a ton of talent. Very cool. Oh, that's fun. Well, that's why I like that question. It brings up some very interesting answers. Well, listen, Mike, let me give you a proper introduction, and we're going to dive into your life here. Mike Furman works at Chriswell Chevrolet and has been the number one national Corvette specialist for well over a decade. He has sold over 4,600 Corvettes and delivered 8,000 plus vehicles. He won the only two national Corvette sales contests from GM in 2011 and 2012, which earned him an all-expense-paid trip to the 24-hour of Le Mans. You may have seen Mike in two episodes of Bravo TV's reality show, Newlyweds, when the show's personality needed a Corvette in record time, and guess what? Mike delivered. He wrote one article with photos that broke the Facebook counter 
at over 44 million views and over 400,000 shares. He writes a weekly blog for a variety of forums that gets 40,000 views per week. As you can see, Mike likes to set records. He's in his 43rd year of selling Corvettes and he's certified to sell all nine brands at Chriswell Automotive. We'll be back in just a moment to talk with Mike more about his life, but first a word from our sponsors. Sit back, keep your seatbelts on. We're talking Corvettes today, baby. We're going to have some fun. We'll be right back. Did you know Covercraft offers you much, much more than car covers, floor mats, seat covers, and trunk liners? When you visit Covercraft.com, you'll find Cologne Custom Bras, LaBra Front End Covers, and Hood Protectors that protect your vehicle's front end while on a road trip. No more rock chips or hours removing nasty bug jerky from your grill and your paint. You'll find vehicle seatback organizers that keep everything in check, perfect for those kids in the back seat. Spidey Gear Webs that keeps cargo that's in your truck bed safely in place. Seat heaters, cargo bars, pro nets, rooftop carriers, bumper frames, bump steps, pet ramps, pet travel barriers to keep Fido in the back seat, tire covers, Carhartt backpacks, cooler bags, tote bags, tool bags, and zippered tote bags to keep everything secure. And don't forget their dash mat dashboard covers that shield the sun's damaging UV rays. Covercraft offers you an incredible list of solutions for your favorite rides. They're easy to install, easy to remove pet protection pads, are easy to wash too, and protect your floors and seats from Fido's damaging claws and messy fur and air. And here's something special from me here at Cars Yeah. If you use the code YAH120 at checkout at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off on me. Covercraft.com. Go there and use the code YEAH120 at checkout for that 10% discount. Covercraft, they've got you covered. American Collectors Insurance, that's how I now protect my Porsche Turbo. The one I call my orange crush. Are you insuring your classic vehicles on your regular daily driver auto policy? Then your special vehicles are at risk. Your regular auto insurance carrier won't tell you how much you'll get until after a claim. And more than likely, you'll be in for a rude awakening. With a agreed value policy from American Collectors Insurance, you'll be paid your vehicle's full agreed value. No surprises. If you're driving your collector car less than 5,000 miles a year, Do what I did. Call American Collectors Insurance and get your very own agreed value policy tailored to your specific vehicle. If you're like me, you're picky about who works on your special ride. A great policy allows you to choose your repair shop of choice, and that means you'll know the job is done right. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. They've been protecting vehicles since 1976. Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love. I did at American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Mike, as we continue on your journey, I would love for you to share a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that has meaning for you. I know you love to drive, so... Grab the wheel. Well, as an athlete, I always had two that I always lived by, and I most certainly carry that into business. And uh, the first one is the harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> and, and the second one is chance favors the prepared mind. Yeah. Now, tell me, th- those are both great quotes, and I love them, especially from an athletic standpoint. Tell me how you've converted those into a mindset to be a guy that has sold more cars than probably anybody on the planet. Well, I, I most certainly am very prepared. I'm very thorough. I don't leave things to chance. I literally, uh, I cover everything that I can. I am very um, uh, much an open book. I'm very honest. It's easy to remember things that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I basically think outside of the box all the time. And I most certainly put myself in the customer's position. And uh, I try to stay a step or two ahead it's like like a wrestling match, really. I'm I'm thinking five, ten moves ahead. Yeah. And I want to make sure my customers are prepared and ready when the time comes. So I'm I'm very thorough. Well, it definitely has helped you. Now you've been selling cars for a long time, and no doubt you've seen a huge change and migration in not only how cars are sold, but also how well prepared consumers are. Because back in the day we'd walk on the lot and we really didn't have much to go by other than that brochure you handed us or the things you told us. But now the consumers are so prepared. So tell me some of the ways you've seen this transition change and how it's affected you and also made your life better for helping consumers 
get behind the wheel of a Corvette? Well, I tell you, I started July 26th of 1978. And wow. um, I don't think we even had a fax machine at the time. Uh, yeah, so, probably not. You know, and, and obviously the computers and things like that. So at, over time, around 1988, they said the Internet was coming. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five years later, I, they said the Internet's coming. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five years later, they said the Internet's coming. It's going to really affect your business. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And lo and behold, somewhere around the early 2000s, it really, you really started to see a difference. Mm -hmm. And I mean that in, in a good way because the customers were much well informed mm -hmm. by the Internet. And I love that they are more informed. It makes my job easier. The only bad thing is that sometimes on the Internet, it's like gas on a fire. And if you have bad information, it's going to spread. <laughs> yeah. And they don't know it's not real because it's on the Internet. It must be true. Right. So I have to fight that at times. But that's an easy battle to get over because I've been doing this so long. There's pretty much uh, – I've heard it all, in other words. And uh, so I'm, I'm able to ballot a lot better than the average salesman because I, I have so much experience and people trust me. I think trust is the key word because uh, in car sales for so long, car salespeople in many ways have had a bad reputation because of that lack of trust. You walk in, you feel like the person's not being honest. And the old days of buying cars where you sit in that little crummy little office and then the guy kept going let me go talk to my boss and you always thought they were going back there eating donuts and laughing we've almost got this guy you know <laughs> yeah. you just never felt like you were being told the truth and you never felt like you walked away getting a, a fair offer you know most people need to realize a dealership has to make money they can't exist the salesman has to eat too but there's a fair balance there so let me ask you this What's one of your, I don't know if I should call it a secret, but one of your methods that you've learned has helped you be really successful when it comes to fulfilling dreams? Because let's face it, nobody needs a Corvette. They want a Corvette. It is a want item. You are 100% not a need item. Yeah. But one of the things, and, and you brought up the word fair, and I'm going to play off of that because it's right on the button. Great. Uh, I always say that I treat my customers just like my kids, fair and consistently. And if you're fair and consistent with people, they understand, they can adjust to that. And I'm not a big fan of surprises. And so neither are customers. So, you know, when it comes to that, I am super fair and super consistent. I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm educated as far as what people want and what they're looking for. So I can narrow in really quick, really fast. Well, I think that's, that's awesome. And that explains a, a lot about your success. For us customers, when we've decided that we want a Corvette and we want to come in and buy a Corvette from you, Mike, what's the best things we can prepare ourselves for so that when we come in not only do we get treated fairly you're going to do that anyway but also we get the best deal we can get and more importantly we end up with the car we want well i have a website called the corvette and i have a ton of information on there and and uh that information is there to arm you to inform you to educate you so that when you do come in to me or you call me because 80 percent of my business is out of state uh, i never meet the customer at least you're extremely well informed with the proper information and that way i can best help you build the car you want or find the exact corvette you want and uh, that makes uh, them more at ease and it most certainly uh, helps me do my job better are there any other salespeople that are doing what you're doing? I don't think I've ever heard of a salesperson that has his own website to help the consumer get what they want. No, I'm, uh, you know, I, my competition, it's pretty funny uh, because I don't consider it my competition. It's uh, this business in today's world. I'm like a dinosaur. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, my computer skills are, are fair. They're not terrific, but I, I'm pretty good at marketing and, and knowing what customers want. So I know what to put on the website. And so that helps tremendously. And when I write these blogs every week with my Corvette deliveries, yeah, there's not one sales pitch in there. It's all about uh, the customer and their experience and pictures of them taking delivery of their car. It shows different color combos. So it's informing, informing, informing. It keeps on educating customers. And that's one of the beauties of, uh, of my blogs. Well, your blogs are like candy. You're putting these pictures of people fulfilling dreams out there. I follow you and I go, okay, I see what's going on here because now anybody who might have an inkling to buy themselves a Corvette 
sees these people that are doing it and they go, I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy. And Mike's the one that can help me fulfill my dreams. Have you found, now I know that I mentioned in your intro that you're certified to sell all the different brands that Chriswell has, but Corvettes seem to be your specialty. Have you always been a Corvette fan? Oh yeah. And I'll never forget. It was like uh, April of my senior year in high school in 1978. And I I opened up a magazine, and the, the pace car for the Indy 500 was the 1978 Corvette in black with silver, silver interior, mm-hmm. and it, it just stunned me. And I, <laughs> from that moment on, I was a huge Corvette fan, and months later, I was selling them and everything else. And uh, I, I got to tell you, it, uh, it captivated me so much that I've owned uh, 21 Corvettes and 44 muscle cars, but wow. I'm known for my Corvettes. No doubt. Now, this new Corvette is a game changer in my opinion. I got to see the new car when it was first out at Laguna Seca at the racetrack and I walked up and I just went, oh my gosh, these guys seem to have hit it out of the park. What's your impression of the new Corvette? Has it brought some new kinds of Corvette buyers to the market? And that's a really interesting question. And I'll tell you the the simple answer is yes, but uh, I have had more Porsche, Ferrari, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, Uh, Lamborghini, Maserati, buyers in the marketplace, buying them and raving about them. And that never happened before. And so for a Ferrari, um, I get leads from the Ferrari chat line. I've never even been on a Ferrari chat line, yeah. and I'm getting leads from them. I'm getting Porsche leads and uh, for, for uh, Corvettes, and so these people have never been in the American car market, and they tell me that. Trust me. Yeah. And and I, they just rave about this car. Once they get to drive it, feel it, touch it, and and actually own it, they're just stunned uh, how good it is. Uh, you know, that's what I've heard from friends of mine that have gotten these cars, and I have a pretty big social media following here at Cars, yeah. And every week, it seems like now I'm seeing somebody gets their new Corvette, and they're so excited by it, and they've, they're taking videos of them rolling out of trailers. I also find it interesting that I believe you just said most of your customers are not local to you. These are people buying from all over the country and, and maybe all over the world? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh- I can't deliver new Corvettes outside of the United States, but I can sell used Corvettes outside, mm-hmm. and um, we just can't export them. But, uh, I mean, I, I've sold Corvettes to people in Bainbridge Island, which is eight miles off the coast of Seattle, Washington. <laughs> um, you probably know where that is. You're oh, yeah, Washington. it's right up the road. I'm in Gig Harbor, Washington. Yeah. I know Bainbridge. I know some car guys up there, too. So think about how far that is. I'm 30 miles north of Washington, D.C., where I uh, live and work, and Think about how far that is. How many Chevrolet dealers did they pass to get to me? I, I mean, know. it's an eight-mile um, ferry ride just to get to Seattle. It's amazing. I'll tell you, though, my next-door neighbor just bought two new cars last year. Maybe it was a year before. And he bought them online. Um, he didn't like the dealers he had dealt with here. And he said, you know what? Nobody has the car I want. They want to sell me cars I don't want. I want this car. And he went online. And a week and a half later, the cars roll up to his house. I'm sitting here looking at my window going, up. Oh, Bill bought another car. One of them was a Ford Raptor. And at the time he bought his car, they were super popular and trying to find the one he wanted with all his specs. And the other was an Audi that he bought for his wife. The market's really changed for us buyers now. We don't have to just buy local. We can go out there and search and find anything. And I would assume someone like you that sold so many cars, you can pretty much get me any Corvette I want, right? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, that's two questions. The first one you said about uh, the gentleman, your neighbor, that uh, doesn't want to buy a car he doesn't want. And I'm, I'm going to answer that for you. If somebody buys a car, and it's really not exactly what they wanted, they're going to be mad at the salesman. Yes. And I don't want them mad at me. (laughs) And then, you know, so I look to get exactly what they want. I listen to what they're they're looking for. And like you said earlier, it's a want item, not a a necessary item. And so I make sure that they're getting everything they want. I want it built exactly to their specs. Mm -hmm. And so that's the beauty of these factory orders for um, a a new generation vehicle. It's all sold factory orders. So you're you're specking it out exactly the way they want it. Uh, So it certainly makes it easier. What's the lead time today? If I ordered a car from you today, when could I have it? Well, to give you an idea, I get about 750 Corvette allocations a year, 
And if you put down a deposit today, it's probably 10 to 12 months before your allocation comes up. Wow. And then, um, and then we build it exactly the way you want it, and it's six weeks to build and ship. But you say, wow, bud, if it was a Ferrari, it's three and a half years you're on a waiting <laughs> list. Yeah. And you got to be anointed to get one and then all this <laughs> other stuff. And, you know, yeah. but you, and then the second part of your question earlier is I, I get 100 plus emails a day and 50 calls a day. Wow. Seven days a week. Oh, my God. I'm on the internet at 5 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm answering information leads uh, through till 10 or 11 o'clock at night sometimes. Wow. And so it's seven days a week. Think about the numbers, and it's always a numbers game. And, and yeah. the more you get in front of, the more chance you have to help and, and whatnot. But uh, so that's why the internet, you know, phone calls, people shopping that way. It's just incredible. The internet has helped tremendously. No doubt. My gosh. Well, I tell you, you've got to love what you do to be able to have that kind of dedication and hard work. I think a lot of that discipline comes from being an athlete and that carries forward. Now, I always ask my guests about a challenge. This year, the big challenge is the 800,000 pound gorilla named COVID that sits in the room. How has that affected your business this year? Yeah, I'm only delivering 50 or 60 a month, so it's really hurt oh, me. Oh, is that all? Jeez. Yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. But, you know, the, yes, it, listen, COVID s certainly hurt, but all it means is less people coming into the dealership. But if I'm delivering 80 percent out of state, what what's the difference? They're not right. coming in the dealership anyway. So I've been doing FedEx uh, deals this way, FedExing the paperwork uh, payment process for eight to 10 years, the last eight to 10 years. So I, I've been pre-COVID, post-COVID, been doing this business this way. So although, um, you know, people are... Um, uh, leery of coming into a, uh, an establishment, whether it's a restaurant or whatnot, I don't have to worry about that. It hasn't affected me, really. Yeah, you kind of prepared for a catastrophe before a catastrophe, which is pretty cool. So nice way you've pivoted your business over the years in many ways. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I want to dive into your personal passion for cars, especially Corvettes. So keep the seatbelts on. We'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation and talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through auto related events, car shows, and drives. Among these nonprofits is TechForce Foundation, a great organization dedicated to solving the technician shortage that threatens the transportation industry today. By providing career development resources and increasing awareness and enthusiasm for the tech profession, TechForce is bringing bright young students into the auto, diesel, aviation, marine, motorcycle, motorsports, and restoration worlds. To date, they've awarded more than $10 million in scholarships and grants to tech students. And in times like these, I don't have to tell you how essential those techs are. Keeping our delivery and emergency vehicles running and keeping America rolling. To learn more about TechForce or to make a donation to this cause, visit www.techforce.org. You'll be glad you did. Kevin Buckler is a winning racer and team owner of the Racers Group. He has over 100 professional wins, multiple wins at the 24-hour of Daytona, and a win at Le Mans. Kevin realized the racing world is about the people and founded Adobe Road Winery. He and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series, four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own with a racing twist. Just like in racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, superb taste, all blended together with a whole lot of fun. There are four carefully crafted blends with race-inspired names, Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. When you purchase all four, you get the entire lineup in a beautifully designed gift box. There's a printed description of the blends inside the box lid, and every bottle is parked in a protective die-cut placeholder. The bottles feature three-dimensional labels, and I promise you'll want to keep them after enjoying these delicious wines. The box is so cool, you'll want to keep it too. The Racing Series is a killer gift for the automotive enthusiasts in your life, and I have a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYEAH, all one word, all caps, at checkout, you'll get $10 off any purchase of wine from the Racing Series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. 
Use the code CARSYEAH at checkout for $10 off on your purchase today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the Racing Series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARSYEAH today to get your deal. Cheers! My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must-read. Whether you dream of owning a collector car, maybe you have two, or maybe you've got 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Here's a couple deals I have for you just for listening here on Cars Yeah. If you use the checkout code Cars Yeah, you'll receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription at Sports Car Market. That's an exclusive offer from Cars Yeah. And guess what? Here's another deal. If you'd like to get the actual magazine, use the code BSH for buy, sell, hold. That's code BSH. And you'll get $10 off your annual print subscription. That's right. $10 off. Both of these are exclusive offers here at Cars Yeah for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just go to sportscarmarket.com and get your deals today. All right, Mike, we're back. I would love for you to share a story with me that instigated your personal passion for cars, that pivotal moment in your life when you knew that you were going to be a car guy. You know, I, I stated it earlier. I said, you know, I'm, I'm in the library. I'm looking at this car magazine, and it really just hit me. And, I, and I, I've loved them ever since. Uh, I love the history of them. I've got uh, every Corvette brochure dating back to 1953, all the original brochures all the way to 2020. I know them inside and out. I study the the information that comes out. It's just a passion. You know, yeah. it's just like uh, some people are wine connoisseurs. Well, mm-hmm. I'm a Corvette connoisseur. How's that? <laughs> well, you're very fortunate, but you figured out the secret sauce to life, to how to have a career around a passion for something. I mean, you're, you've are you hit the golden jackpot there. You figured it out. Now, you mentioned that you've had a lot of Corvettes and you've had a lot of muscle cars. What was your first really special car? That car that you finally got that you went, man, I've always wanted this thing. What was it? 59 Corvette was my first Corvette, and um, black with red interior, two four barrels, and, you know, it was just cool looking, and it was, at the time, it was like 30 years old, the, the car, but from every angle, the engineering and design of that vehicle was just so cool, and, and you could look at the car from any angle, and it just really was like a wow factor. It really was unbelievable, so that was really a, a defining moment. I'll bet. Well, I'm going to get into your head a little bit here, Mike, and be a bit of a psychologist. I think I know part of the answer already. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, not what you want to be. This is who you see yourself manifest into a vehicle. I'm going to assume it's going to be a Corvette. Hopefully I'm thinking right here, but maybe we narrow it down to your make and model and why. I believe that's a really good question. And and I thought about this as from time to time, and I'd say a 57 Corvette. Not fast, not super fast, but it's somewhat affordable. It's unique and rare, and um, most certainly gets the job done as far as um, hitting all the bullet points, and uh, so I think that would be the answer. This may be a, a more difficult question, but I'll throw this one in. Of all the Corvettes you've had, and all the Corvettes you've sold, and all the Corvettes you've seen, is there a favorite? I've said this answer for almost four decades, and I'll tell you the answer is, if you ask any Corvette person what's their favorite Corvette, it's always the one they own currently. Okay. Well, considering you probably have more than one. Well, I've had 11 at one time, but right now I'm down to one. I've got a 2020 Corvette, and uh, I'll be placing an order for a 2021 Corvette convertible uh, probably in the next week or two. Oh, there you go. Awesome. All right, Mike, we're entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off some questions, get some quick blips of that 2020 Corvette throttle. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to this tremendous success you've had in selling Corvettes? I am a task master. I multitask better than anyone I've ever met. It it certainly is uh, the number one reason I think I'm successful because I I just get it done. I can do six, seven, eight things at once, and I know what's going on. I can handle uh, what I'm doing with those things and and most certainly compartmentalize uh, all of it. 
Well, can you tell maybe some listeners out there one little trade secret of yours that enables you to do that? Do you use like lists? Do you use kind of certain apps or ways to keep all this stuff straight? You know, when you do what I do so often, you really have it in your head what you're what you got to get accomplished every day. When I was younger, I used to write everything down. Mm-hmm. But as I've gotten older, I've been able to put it in a compartment and I can open up every compartment and I don't leave work until I'm done mm. with those compartments. I have a yellow pad at work. I know it sounds old school. I write down every single message and I X out each one as I go that I've called them back before I leave for the day. I email back everybody that I've, I've um, you know emailed that day. So I don't leave work until every single one is touched back. Well, therein lies the secret to your success. It's lists and tasks and getting them done. And I'll tell my listeners, you know, sometimes I chase guests to be on the show for a long time. Uh, reached out to Mike via a good friend, Tom Gibson. And you know what? Two days later, here we are talking. You are the task master, my friend. I really appreciate that. If I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, Zora Arcus Duntoff. I spent every summer with him a week, uh, every summer from 78 through 1990. He would come to the Malcolm Connor Corvette show. He was a guest of the Connor family and he would stay the week or two uh, at the dealership and, uh, you know, with the Connors and going to dinners and stuff like that. And the guy was just an incredible man. And I learned a lot from him just by not talking, listening. <laughs> yes. And um, I was a young guy, obviously. And um, so the bottom line is that he would be enamored with this mid-engine Corvette. That was his one goal. He retired in 1975. And as he left, he told the, the incoming gentleman, uh, Dave McClellan, he said, and his last words to him were, build the mid-engine Corvette. And here it is, uh, 2020 and it's Decades out. Decades later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, I always ask my guests for the best automotive advice someone else has ever received. I'm going to mix this question up for you a little bit, Mike. If I decided to buy a Corvette, what's the best advice you would offer me before I decide what I want in that Corvette? Well, I would ask if it's your first one ever, number one. So it would be. Yep. Well, I mean, if it's your first one ever, then I would say, you know, we would need to um, listen. To, I'd listen to what you're seeking in a car. Um, we don't have to worry about automatic or stick anymore because all the 2020s are automatics. Yep. Um, I'd want to hear color choices and what your dream was. What's the first Corvette you ever saw? You know, just little points of what you've seen in the past mm-hmm. to try to build what you want for the future. And then um, and go from there. Just uh, take it one step at a time. If I had one to test drive, I most certainly would recommend a test drive. Unfortunately, everything that comes in is sold right now. Yeah. It's not always like that, but uh, that would be helpful. If you had a friend that owned one, I would tell him to you know, take, take you for a ride. I've had people decide within 400 feet that they wanted to take the vehicle, and, and they were sold. And um, that's how, how strong this car is. Well, no doubt. And, but I do always tell people, if you have a dream car, please go drive one. And if it's an older car, like an older Corvette, drive a bunch of them because they're not all the same. Uh, they all have a little different uh, temperament, if you will, before you select the one that you've got to live with. Now, when it comes to resources, is there a go-to for you, something you tend to find yourself looking at all the time? You know, there's a great forum out there called the midenginecorvetteforum.com. And it's got all the update information, pictures, stories, delivery stuff, ideas, you know, just it's a great form. And uh, they probably get uh, three, four hundred people a day that are seeking information on there. And they have close to seven thousand members. And that's growing by the day. Wow. Um, but I would say midenginecorvetteforum.com. That is by far the best site to get true information, not BS. And, you know, that's what I look at. OK. Now, is there a book you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy reading? Well, there's one by... Um, Kevin McKay wrote called The Corvette Hunter. Yep. And that is a great book. And the second one, I read this a long time ago, and it's by a man named Gene Klein. And it's called First Down in a Billion. And Gene was, uh, you know, basically an entrepreneur, super smart, great common sense. And he just was a great businessman. And I, I read about him a long time ago. And uh, if you ever, ever get the chance to read anything by him, he's passed on a couple of decades ago, but mm-hmm. He was uh, just an incredible gentleman. 
There you go. Yeah, no one's ever recommended that book, so I'm glad you did. I remind our listeners you can find uh, links to these books on Mike's show notes page. Just go to carsdad.com, type in Mike Furman, F-U-R-M-A-N, into the search bar, and his page will pop right up. And it will definitely, and we'll be mentioning this at the end, have links to his blog and how you can get a hold of Mike. All right, Mike, we're up to the checkered flag here. This last question can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you a fun collector car. So that means you can keep your current Corvette or the new one that you're going to order. We'll call those your everyday drivers. This is something unique and fun to park in your garage. But there's a couple rules to my game since I'm writing the check. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. You have to drive it and enjoy it. No dust collectors here. But it's the only one cool collector car you can have parked next to that new Corvette. So what am I going to buy you today, Mike? This is simple as simple can be. Okay. 19, 1963 Corvette Split Window Coupe in red with red interior. Stick shift, please. A red on red. Okay. Very nice. Well, that's the classic year, of course, the Stingray, right? So, yeah. Correct. There, there you go. Well, uh, that shouldn't be too hard to find, but red on red, I'm not sure if I've ever seen one like that in person, but uh, are you a, a red car guy by, by nature? You know, I, I'm actually a blue car guy. I've had oh. seven qu- blue Corvettes in a row, and then I just uh, got a silver 2020 in March, but with the blue interior. Okay. And um, <laughs> and I'm just about to order a new, the new red mist tint coat, which is coming out for 2021. Um, but I am a blue car fan. And uh, but in a '63, it's iconic. It's yeah. it's old. It's an antique. It's beautiful in red, red. So that's just my wish. Okay, I'll see what I can do for you. I kind of knew it would be a Corvette, but that makes sense to me. The classic split window 63 Stingray. Mike, you have taken us on a really fun drive today. I want to thank you for sharing some time with us. Before I let you go, though, would you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the sunset in that 63 Stingray? You know, all I can do is tell you is if you've never bought a Corvette before, now's the time to to jump in. And that mid-engine Corvette is the one to jump in at. It's just an incredible vehicle. I've driven them all. I've raced them all. I've been on tracks all over the country. And and I got to tell you, the mid-engine Corvette is all of it. It it takes a lot to wow me. And uh, if you're going to be in the Corvette market, now's the time to jump and uh, buy it. You're not going to regret it. Oh, absolutely. Hey, what's the best way for our listeners to keep up with you and learn more about you? And more importantly, if they want to buy a Corvette, reach you. Well, you can reach me at my desk direct line, which is 301-212-4420. You can email me at mfurman at criswellauto.com. Or you can check out my website, which is corvettefurman.com. I'm also on Instagram, corvette.furman, and I'm on Facebook. Uh, I have a page called Corvette Furman. So they're all great ways. Uh, You follow my deliveries. I have videos, things on there that are important and uh, fun to watch. You know, I'd encourage you listeners, even if maybe you're not in the market for a Corvette at this time, follow him. I, I love your Facebook page because you got these deliveries of these people. I saw one just uh, yesterday of a gentleman and his son that came and picked up their new Corvette. It's that cool. It was really cool. It was black and it had those red stripes on the fenders. Yep. Yep. The hash marks. You know, I love that. Kind of it reckons back to the old days of racing corvettes and so forth so make sure you follow him i'll put all of mike's links on his show notes page if you're driving right now or running or whatever you're doing so you can find him you know no matter what kind of car guy you're gonna love what mike's doing the the passion of this guy just seeps out of his pores you're gonna have some fun here and if you're lucky enough to be able to buy yourself a new corvette mike is a place to start and it's probably the last place you'll have to go to you can find everything on his show notes page mike hey oh by the way again thanks uh shout out to tom gibson for putting us together he's brought me so many great guests uh and he connected you with me today mike so tom gibson gibson communications he does a wonderful job mike thanks for being so generous today with your time your expertise and for sharing your Corvette lifestyle with our listeners. Until you and I talk again, or I call you to order a Corvette, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Mark. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting, but what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars Yeah, 
has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!